Welcome to Revelation Unraveled. I'm your host, William Tapley, also known as the Third Eagle of the Apocalypse and the Co-Prophet of the End Times. This will be part two in my series on the Four Blood Moon Prophecy. And I believe this is very significant. And it is a warning to the modern nation of Israel and to the rest of the world. And these four blood moons occur exactly six lunar months apart. And that results in the number 666, the number of the Antichrist. And I've been looking at a book by Dr. John Hakey called Four Blood Moons. And this was sent to me very kindly by one of my subscribers. And I want to read some passages from this because he includes a lot of false prophecy. And the problem is that people will discount the four blood moon prophecy after they realize that he is wrong on so many other things. For example, he talks about the rapture and he gives very inconsistent prophecy. So let's look at page 66 first in case you have a copy. And a lot of people I know, know do have copies because this is a million seller for him. And here's what he writes about the rapture. Many are now asking what signs must be fulfilled before the church can be raptured from the earth. The answer is zero. Dr. Hagee, so far you are 100% correct. The rapture of the church of Jesus Christ is imminent. It could happen before you finish reading this page. Dr. Hagee, again, I agree with you 100%. And here's what you write on page 244 of your book. The coming four blood moons of 2014 to 15 does not mean the rapture is going to happen during that time. Why? Because the rapture could happen at any moment. Okay, Dr. Hagee, so then I have to ask you, why do you say the last trumpet must come first? Because on page 80, you quote the disciple Paul. And he is not talking about the rapture. Paul describes the rapture to believers in Corinth and Thessalonica by declaring, For the last trumpet will sound, the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, the dead in Christ will rise first. Well, here is your mistake, Dr. Hagee. Paul is talking about our Lord's coming at Armageddon, when there will be a trumpet, and when the dead will rise. He is not talking about the rapture. Jesus will come like a thief in the night. He comes as a bridegroom for his bride. And the rapture, you were correct the first time. The rapture is imminent. Please don't think you have to wait for the last trumpet, which will come after all the other trumpets. Please don't wait until you see the dead rising. This rapture is imminent. And now let's look at another one of your errors. And that's where you say that the rider of the white horse in the book of Revelation is the Antichrist. And on page 126, you write, Revelation 6 describes the red horse of war, the black horse of famine, and the pale horse of death. This trinity of torment thunders across the face of the earth, commanded by the Antichrist, who is riding the white horse of Revelation 6.1. Well, this is maybe not a huge error, the rider of the white horse is evil, but it symbolizes the apostasy because the apostasy comes before the Antichrist. Let's see what St. Paul writes in 2 Thessalonians. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, this is the great day of the Lord when Jesus returns, except there come the falling away first. This falling away first is the apostasy. It comes before the Antichrist. And Jesus, in Matthew's Olivet Discourse, gives the exact same sequence as in the book of Revelation. And here you will see very definitely the Antichrist 
follows the apostasy. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 through 5, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. The deception comes first. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. This is the apostasy. This is the white horse. And in Matthew 24, verse 6, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of war. Now this is the red horse. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So both the apostasy, the white horse, and the red horse of war come before the Antichrist. And in Matthew 24, verse 7, And there shall be famines, now this is the black horse, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. And in the next verse, verse 8, Matthew writes, All these are the beginnings of sorrows. So we see the white horse of apostasy and the red horse of war and the black horse of famine all precede the Antichrist. And now Jesus does talk about the Antichrist, and we know that because he divides the next 18 verses, that is 9 through 26, into a 6-6-6 pattern. And I've discussed this many times before, and he follows those 18 verses with 15 verses, that is verses 27 through 41, divided into a 5-5-5 five, five, five sequence. And the reason he does this is because Mary's rosary is the weapon that he will use to defeat the Antichrist. That's why 5-5-5 five, five, five follows 6-6-6, six, 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 just as David chose five smooth pebbles to defeat Goliath. And now let's look at one of John Aikie's very serious mistakes in his book, where he talks about World War III. And Dr. Hagee writes on page 127, World War III is coming. Well, that's not quite true. World War III has already begun. And if you don't believe me, just Google Ukraine. We can see the storm gathering in the Middle East. And again, Israel is the key. Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, and the Arab Spring nations have surrounded Israel, the island of freedom and democracy, in an ocean of terror and tyranny. Well, you are a good writer, Dr. Hagee, and I enjoyed reading this book. I maybe shouldn't criticize you too much. It's your prophecy that is in error. God is watching. The final drama is unfolding before our eyes as you read it on the front pages of your newspaper, and watch it on the national news almost every night. The second rider of the apocalypse will ride in on a red horse, bringing war and bloodshed. He is already riding. God will destroy the enemies of Israel in the most supernatural display of his power ever since he crushed Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea. Oh, now I'm afraid we are on the wrong page. Dr. Hagee, you are giving the people cushions again. You are giving them pillows. You want to give them a soft prophecy, one that will not upset them, one that will not wake them up. And that is not what a true prophet does. A true prophet is going to tell America and Israel they must repent. God will protect Israel, and the course of history will be changed forever. No, you are mistaken, Dr. Hagee. God has abandoned Israel. And why have they abandoned Israel? Because they have abandoned the law of Moses. Let's read what Daniel says in his chapter 9, verse 11. All Israel have transgressed your law, and the curse which is written in the book of Moses. Do you know what this curse is, Dr. Hagee? The curse is that when Israel abandons the law of Moses, they will be ruled by their enemies. And that is about to happen. And the curse which is written in the book of Moses is poured on us. So where has Israel transgressed the law of Moses? They have turned Jerusalem into a Sodom and Egypt, 
as John prophesied in his chapter 11, verse number 8 of the book of Revelation. Israel has spent hundreds of millions of dollars promoting gay tourism. God has abandoned Israel, and God will punish Israel. He will fulfill that covenant. He must, to keep his part of the covenant, bring the curse upon Israel. And in verse 26 of chapter 9, the people of the prince who shall come shall destroy the city. And that city is Jerusalem. And that is an end times prophecy. Please don't tell me that Daniel 9.26 was fulfilled when Titus destroyed Jerusalem. We know this is an end times prophecy as Daniel explains in the previous verses, 24 and 25. In chapter 9, verse 24, Daniel writes about seven events that can only occur at the very end, including that sin may have an end and that prophecy may be fulfilled. So in conclusion, Dr. Hagee, it's probably not too important that you do not understand who the rider of the white horse is, or that you send mixed signals about the rapture. The rapture is imminent. But it is very serious that you somehow think that Israel can survive World War III without repentance. And I would like to read your solution. This is what you write on page 129. If America is to survive, there must be a time of national repentance for our sins and a return to the eternal truths of the Word of God. Well, why can't I substitute the word Israel? If Israel is to survive, there must be a time of national repentance. Dr. Hagee, throw out those cushions and pillows you must prophesy to Israel. You must tell both America and Israel that we must cease our support of the horrible crime of sodomy. And why should we be surprised? Jesus said the end times would be as in the days of Lot. And one more question, Dr. Hagee. Why would Jesus say that those who are in Judea, when they see the abomination of desolation, must flee? Israel is going to be on the losing side of World War III. And if you would like to understand all the prophecies of Daniel, I recommend that you visit my new thirdeaglemedia.com website. Download those PDF files. Because you cannot understand Daniel as he is printed in your Bibles. Those prophecies are sealed up, and the only way you can unseal them is to rearrange the chapters and the verses. If you want to understand the judgments from Almighty God, which are about to fall upon both the nation of Israel and on the nation of the United States of America.